Welcome to help with Maple and the application problems for this week in class. Uh, the first one uh, we're going to look at, hopefully by the end of this, viewing this online lecture, uh, a student should have this, uh, these new skills in their toolbox that they can use. You should be able to put data into lists, or you could call these, uh, what Maple calls them lists, but they could also be called arrays. Um, how to use the sequence command, which is the dollar sign command. Create new lists from old lists. Uh, using summations. Knowledge of the least squares fit. Solving a system of equations in Maple. Determining the error in a least squares fit. Making plots of data using the plots package. Use the right hand side command use the display command, use the subs command, and create functions in Maple. Also, make predictions using the, the model created in Maple. So what we're going to do is investigation A, and here's what investigation A is. It says uh, what we're going to use is the data from the textbook on page 85, and in, in in investigation A, it says use an equation 3 to verify the slope figure shown in the final column of the table in figure 2.19, then plot these points. In the appropriate uh, graphing calculator, spreadsheet, or computer program is available. Use it to find a straight line where y equals a plus b times p, where p is the population, as in uh, 2 that the best fit for these points. Um, so basically what we're going to try to do is um, use this data to create a best fit plot and then use those parameters to help us build a population model. And then we're going to make predictions of what the future population of the U.S. Uh, should be based on these points. So uh, to start out, um, I've got my restart command in Maple. So let me execute that. And then this is the differential equation we're going to solve. Uh, uh, you have the uh, change in the population is equal to some constant k times the population p, uh, also times m minus the current population. Um, and m tends to be a, um, uh, a constant, and k is a constant uh, of the problem. And we don't know what those are yet. So the next one is I wanted to take, let's see if this works here. Yeah, it worked. That should be a control L, and I'm using equation one here and dividing it by P. And then um, I'm rewriting it this way because the, the whole idea of this is I've got, all I have is population data and time data, and I have no idea what my coefficients K and M are. And I need to determine what they are from the population data. And the way we're going to do that is if you look at here, I got a constant minus a constant times our data. And then over here, I've got the derivative of our data in time and, a, and the actual data of the population at a particular time. So I'm going to use that to help us predict. So I've got a I need a slope and the actual data value. And I'm going to try and use those to help me predict these coefficients m and k. OK, so here we go. So if you look at this curve, uh, this figure, it has some data. And I have, I have put them in these lists. So I've called it years, because this is the year data. And I've used the assignment can command, colon equals. Now, if I want this information to be associated with years 2, I have to use colon equals. If I just use an equal sign, that's just it. Like normally in math, I'm making the left-hand side of the equation equal to the right-hand side. In Maple, if you want to call years and get back the years of that I'm putting in, all, that, all this in an array, or a list is called, you have to use the assignment command, which is colon equals. So I'm going to hit return, and I'm going to get my years. I'm going to do the same thing with the population data. So now I have my time data, my population data, and now I'm going to calculate my slope. By definition, the slope at any particular point is the difference of the population at the so at the future point minus the final point. B 
divided by the change in time, in this case, 10 years. So I'm going to do that for all my data using the sequence command. So Maple has this built-in ability. If you call a variable, and that variable is a list, you can access the list by using subscripts. And how do you get the subscripts? Well, it's shift underscore, and that drops you down. So here, let me show you how to do that. So if I type um, uh, pop, pop, it's, it's, it's already there, and I do uh, shift underscore, oh, All right, so to get the population, what you need to do is control shift underscore, and then I'm going to put in a subscript. So I know, okay, let's do eight. And then if I hit return, I should get the eighth value of my population. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There it is. So I got it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm using the sequence command. So I put for my subscript this variable i and, and then I use dollar sign and I say uh, parenthesis and I said i is going to go from 2 to 12. Why 2 to 12? Well if you notice my slope here I use two points one before it in time and one after it in time so I can't use my full array or my full list of points if you count up the number of points we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so I can't do anything for point one or point thirteen so I'm only going to go from points two to twelve and then hit return and that prints out all my slope values so now what we're going to do is go in to uh, uh, creating the data sets to use in our fit to get our parameters so I need to create some Y points and if you if you go back and look at the um, uh, derivative back here I need the derivative which is my slope divided by the population so I'm, I'm using the sequence command again and I have 11 points I have to do this on and so I'm going to uh, and I, I'm going to operate on that and the population it goes one f one more and that's dealt with because my slope array or slope list is smaller than my population list and it's one smaller so I want to increase that by one to get the right uh, population uh, to deal with here and and it calculates all my values now that's my X that's my Y point so this is on the uh, left hand side of my graph and so that's my Y point and then my X point would be population. So uh, I'm going to create X points and using the sequence command with population and go through 2 through 12. And here they are. There's my, all my X points right there. And then I also need to know the number of data points I have. Well, if you count them, you'll have 11. So now I have all my X and Y points that I want to use for my data set. So now what I need to do is calculate uh, do my least fair uh, squares fits calculation. To do that, uh, basically what we have is a list of points, x and y points, and I want to minimize the error in all these points. And by definition, the error is the actual y value that it should be, and then I'm going to subtract off my predicted value, which is uh, my slope times my x coordinate plus b. Now. Uh, that's going to be my, and then I'm going to add all these, I'm going well, to squ square that error and then sum them all up. To use the sum command, you come over here and use the expression palette, and I click on sum, and I want to go from i equals 1 to n. That should give me all my y points and my x points. All right, and then I'm going to compute that. That's going to give me a function of my unknown slope and my unknown y-intercept. All right, so uh, what do we have to do? Well, now if I do that, and now I'm going to take the uh, derivative of this function with respect to my slope variable. And if you do that, you come up with this expression. Okay, and I'm going to take the derivative of my function.
function, error function, with respect to the slope. And I come up with this expression. And, and the whole idea is I'm going to uh, set these derivatives equal to 0, and I'll get a pair of equations. So if I do that, uh, I get these two equations. So to get access to these two equations, I have to calculate the sum of all my x points, the sum of all my y points, the square of my x points, and then sum them up, and then multiply my x points and my y points and sum them up. All right. So now I'm going to do that. I'm going to calculate. I'm going to. I'm going to calculate all those values right now. So I'm going to sum over all my x points. Oh, it doesn't know what x and y is. I forgot to hit the return on my x and y points. So let's make my y points. Let's make my x points. Let's define n also because I'm going to need that. Okay. So let's go and run this now. Let's run it now. There we go. Whoops. I don't think that ran. Let's try and execute that again. Let's try and execute this again. There we go. Now we're executing it. There we go. Alright. So I'm going to set up my equation using the information we had above. So I'll create my first equation and I'll create my second equation. And now I'm a s a storing these equations in a variable eq1 and variable eq using the assignment. So now I want to find my slope and y-intercept. So what I'm going to do is solve a system of equations using maple. To do that, I call this function called fsolve, and I pass it a set of equations and a set of variables. So how do you get a set? Well, it's a cure curly brackets, and I put equation 1, comma, equation 2, and they use the curly brackets again, and I use m, so that's my first variable, and b is my second variable. And then if I hit return, it solves for what my y-intercept and my slope should be, and I want to extract that information, okay? And so I'm doing this in a compound command. So solve now is a set of two values, or a set of two equations. One is b equals this, and the other one is m equals this. So I'm going to extract the first element in that set, which is b equals that, and then I'm going to use the right-hand side command. So that's going to give me the right-hand side of that equation, so that's going to give me that number. And I'm going to do the same for m, but m is located in the second spot of my solution variable. And that gives me my m. Now, I want to check the error in my slope. So I'm going to create this function called fit, or this variable called fit. And I store a y variable is equal to m times x plus b. Now, why am I putting these in parentheses? I want them to show up in my uh, fit variable. That is, I got to put, literally, I want them to put x and y in to that variable. So I did that because that's the equation for my best fit line that I have. And now I got my y points. We had them earlier. There they are. I want to make my predicted y points. Okay. Now this is another sequence command. Instead of the dollar sign, I am actually going to call the actual sequence command, which is S E Q parentheses. I'm going to predict the value of my y point, right? Which should be m, which is the m I calculated up here, times the x value of data I have plus my y intercept. And then I'm going to sequence that through 1 through n. And so I should go through all my x points there. And that calculates all my predicted y's and my actual y's, and you'll see that they don't match. If you look at these numbers, they're not matching. So we've got to look at our error. We've got to figure out the error in this calculation. Well, that's basically going to be the difference between these two points. So you'll notice when I execute that command, I get this, these values, and you'll notice some are higher. That's positive. 
and some are uh, predicted values are lower than what they should be, and I get a negative value. Well, if we added them all up, we'd get a small number because some is adding and some is subtracting. So I want to make sure that they're all positive. So I'm going to square their values using this command and then use the sum command. So I'm going to sum all these i's up from i equals 1 to n. That's a different sum command than what I used before. I could use the expression palette, but this is the um, hard line, the uh, command line values. I'm going to store that in my variable, in my square error. And now I'm going to ta calculate my average error by taking the square root of the square error divided by the total number of points. So that gives me a value based on the error of my data point. So now let's make a plot. So I'm going to call the with plot commands. That brings in a whole bunch of plot commands. I'm going to create the data points I want to point. Since I have data points, Maple loves plotting functions. It doesn't like plotting data. So I'm going to create two sets of data points to plot. One called graph points from the raw data that we got from the book, and one called my fit data using my predictions for y and the x values. So I have them, and now I'm going to store them by using a, a command called point plot. I'm going to store them in plot one, and I'm going to make them red. So the red R is the data from the book, and plot two, the blue data, is going to be my fit. And now I've also used the legend command. This is going to give you the title in the legend that shows up. I store that. Now if you want to plot these two plots over top of each other, the first thing you have to be aware of is that the data that you're plotting the points of over top of each other need to fit into the same graph so that they should have the same range of x and y values in this plot. So that's the display command. And then if I execute the display command, I get, you see the blue points is my nice straight line that I've calculated. And my red points is my actual data. And so you can see the error in my data. All right. Now that we have our slope, what we need to do is make some predictions. So uh, my y-intercept should be my k times m and my slope, my m, should be my just my k. So if I plug them into my differential equation, I get this value. Now I'm going to solve the differential equation using this command called dsolve. So to do that, I have to pass it my differential equation, which I am, using a, using a com control L sequence and putting in 8.1, that's where it's right here. And then I'm telling it I'm solving it for uh, the population P of T. So if I hit return, it gives me back this solution. Well, and then I have a constant. So that's my solution to my differential equation. So um, I want to make some predictions on this data. So I need to substitute in some values into my prediction. So I need to find my initial condition, right? So I know the population value of P of T is in stored in x points 1, and t should equal 0. So what the subs command does is take a set of things to substitute in to an expression. And this expression will be this one right here. So it, wherever it sees t 0, it's going to put in 0. Wherever it sees p of t, it's going to put in the value in, at, of this element in my list. So if I hit return, see it's put them all in there. And so now I want to solve for a particular value. So I'm going to use the solve command. So I'm, I want to solve. I want to pass it a set of uh, equations. In this case, it's a set of one. I want to pass it the equation in 8.3, control L. So I get con type control L and then type in 8.3 and hit return. And that will put it in there. And then I want it to solve for my unknown constant, which is underscore C1. And I have to put that in the list. And then if 
I hit return, it gives me back a list of lists, and I got to extract that. The way you do that is you click on this, and you click set element. I want the first one. If I do that, I get this spot. Well, it's still in the list, so I want to select element one again, and this gives me C1. Okay, so let me execute all them for us. Now I'm going to use the sub command again. I'm going to substitute the equation right here, this one right here, c underscore c1 equals this value, back in to my solution to my differential equation. And if I do that, I get this is my solution to my differential equation. So what I want to do is create a function, okay? And I'm going to call it pops because it's going to calculate my population. So I've hard-coded this in. If you type pops, um, you don't have to hard-code this in. You can get this in the expressions palette right here because I only have one variable. This is the one you want to uh, click. And so f would be the name of the function. And you're going to assign it. a would be the independent variable. And uh, y would be how to operate on it. So what I'm going to do here is my function's called pops. My independent variable is t. And what's my function? Well, I'm going to claim the right-hand side of this value. So this is going to be what the function I'm going to put in there. And if I do that and hit return, it gives me back this definition of the function. So now if I call pops, at 100, so that's a 100 years into the future. So I want to predict the population at 1900, and my, my model starts at 1800. I want to go 100 years into the future, so I need to tell Pops to evaluate 100. And what does, uh, okay, what does eval f? Eval f does, evaluates everything that goes on in here. Okay, so if I just type um, pops 100, it would stick 100 in here and wouldn't ec do any of this math. Eval f says evaluate that function that's there and calculate a number. So it calculates 77 point, okay, 77 million. That's okay. And now I want to evaluate a different population. evaluated a different population. So I have at 1890, I get this value. At uh, 1910, I get this value. And then I want to calculate the difference in what my population model predicted and what the actual population was recorded. And if I do that, I find out that my prediction is actually um, larger than the actual population. And as we go farther into time, I've even given I, mine is even larger than that. But if I go to 1900, I get I'm 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 getting better at it because it, this number is getting smaller. So this is how you make predictions of uh, what the future population should be for um, our system. So here, let me. Um, what would happen if I just type? See how it just puts the information back into my function but doesn't evaluate it, and that's hard to interpret. So um, if we come back here and type eval f, it gives me a number. All right, so let's answer some questions. So um, they want us to they want us to answer uh, how our model predicts the population in 1900. And I've written out here from what we did earlier that mine uh, over predicts it by 0.4 million and over predicts it by 1.1 million and over predicts it by 0 0.03 million. Um, I want to calculate a percent error. So I take the absolute value of my uh, prediction for the population of 1900 and actually divide by 100. And if I hit that, I'm only off by 0.6%. It's not bad. 
if I do the population for 1900, I'm only off by 1.5%. And if I do the population for, um, uh, what is it, uh, 1910, I'm on only off by 0.03%. So I don't think I'm that far off. I think it's pretty acceptable, pretty acceptable population. Um, and, and then you can go into the future, too, and predict uh, what the populations should be. And, and then we could, we could check this against our, the census data to see how valued the population is. Um, well, I know this is a long online lecture, and I hope you learned how to use some maple commands. Um, let me get back to the start here. By collapsing all my subsections here. So I hope you learned or will have learned some how to use maple, how to do the least squares fit, how to make some predictions, um, how to use maple to help you solve some problems. And I'll see you next time. Bye.